So I'm here with Nadine Guth, who is the Director for Sustainability Strategy at Interface. Thank you for taking time for this interview. It's my pleasure. So I know that Interface is really one of the companies that's really ahead when it comes to sustainability. Can you share with me a little bit about where, um, I mean, the development of sustainability within the company during the past 10 or 15 years? Or? Sure, sure. Uh, well, the company was founded in 1973 by Ray Anderson. Who, um, has developed, who had developed a bit of a reputation for being a radical industrialist. Um, a part of the company's history is being the inventor of carpet tile, so this idea of modular soft flooring, um, which in itself has um, many different sustainable attributes just around um, um, the functionality. So carpet tile, carpet in squares, as opposed to carpet in large, rolled sheets. Um, if there's an area, for example, of the floor that becomes damaged or needs to be replaced for some reason, rather than replacing the entire floor, mm -hmm. you have the flexibility of just replacing the one tile. But it was in 1994 when the company decided to take a very different path. Um, Ray Anderson had this vision of working towards a restorative enterprise, which really uh, became a call to action to transform the business to become um, a model for a different way of doing business, a model for the industrial world based on a zero waste philosophy. So being very mindful of the life cycle impacts of our products, um, understanding where the bulk of environmental impacts occur in order to uh, make strategic decisions to reduce those impacts. Um, this whole journey was called uh, Mission Zero, which is the company's promise to eliminate any negative environmental impact. Um, impact reductions that we've seen since 1994 when the company decided to take a very different path, um, this does not happen overnight. And one of, the, one of the points I was exploring in my talk today was the need for collaboration. This is not a journey that Interface can take alone, getting to zero footprint. Um, it necessarily requires partnerships across our supply chain with suppliers, with customers, um, redesigning our supply chain such that customers are now becoming our suppliers of raw materials, taking back used carpet, um, recycling it back into new carpet tiles mm. um, and giving those products new life, um, diver diverting them from landfill and incineration um, while um, closing the loop on our product's life cycle and eliminating our dependency on virgin raw materials. Um, we know from tools like life cycle assessment that the bulk of environmental impacts with our products come from nylon. Um, so being able to reduce the amount of nylon in our products as well as use recycled nylon significantly reduces the impacts of our products. So this is a very important strategy going forward. Oh, that's very ambitious, but uh, sounds really wonderful. Now, I, I must, now I'm curious, then what happened after 2020? When you have reached Mission Zero, then what? The, the goal is, is happening in parallel with expanding the business. So I think we're definitely going to see some new challenges. I think if we reach the goal, it will, when we reach the goal, there will be a large celebration for sure. Um, I, th I think right now the focus has been on how do we accelerate our Mission Zero journey, um, knowing that we don't have much time left. Um, and there's nothing like a really powerful deadline to motivate people um, to um, and, and to create a sense of community, a sense of purpose. So now it, the company isn't just about making really beautiful, high-performing, sustainable carpet tiles. It's um, also about making a difference in the world and showing a better way. Um, so eliminating the concept of waste from operations, um, ensuring that nothing toxic leaves any of Interface's facilities around the world, um, designing products with um, really key principles that are modeled after natural systems um, have been part of the strategies involved in mm. getting to zero footprint. My next question is, what are the challenges? I get this question a lot. What are the main obstacles when you have such a powerful, bold vision? Um, I think these can be sort of framed as opportunities as well. So I've talked about how achieving these goals necessarily requires collaboration across our supply chain. So it takes time to inspire a shift in mindset, a shift in thinking. And um, unfortunately, given the state of our, whether it's global climate destabilization, resource depletion, time is not our friend. So I think rethinking how we 
cooperate, collaborate is really, really important, mm -hmm. but these things take time. So I would say time yeah. is the obstacle. Other challenges, um, I mean, we're losing approximately 30% of our workforce to retirement by the year 2020. So the challenge around um, attracting new talent around, I mean, it, again, it's an opportunity, but also the, the wealth of knowledge, the stories that we might be losing with people who are retiring. So questions around how do we better share information, capture learning as a global organization. Um, we need to sort of focus on the people side of this mission as well. So there are those those realities that we also have to face. You know the challenges, you have the high ambition, but it's also a matter about collaboration so that you can overcome the challenges mm -hmm. because in, in the end it's really about changing the mindset for the whole industry, for the global, at the global level. It's not only one, one company as yes. such, right? This is one interesting challenge too, is um, the, the power of having such a strong vision that resonates with customers in the marketplace is that it's forced our competitors to also catch up and they're becoming really effective as well. I mean, when it comes to sustainability, but perhaps also in the marketing of it, and it can be confusing at time in the marketplace around you know, the perception that everyone is green, everyone's going green, everyone has a green product to sell. Um, what have we lost sort of the essence of what this means from a really authentic place? Um, so it's been wonderful to see change in the industry as a whole, but then now we also have to deal with stronger competitors as well who have very strong stories to share. So I think that opportunity to always be pushing the bar, elevating the game, um, has led to our commitment to provide our customers with complete information in order to make better informed choices. Great. Thank you so much for this very inspiring interview. So, um, thank you for sharing the insight. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. So, we did learn something new today about sustainability and what's happening in Asia when it comes to finance and banking. I hope you enjoyed the interviews and join us again very soon because tomorrow I will also be here to cover what's happening when it comes to education and rebuilding education. Thanks for watching and remember to connect with me through Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and also subscribe with your email to get more information about us in the future as well. So thanks for watching and remember to smile and shine. Bye! Rebuild education, or oh, not how to rebuild, how to rebuild, because I'm not going to rebuild anything, am I?